Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we are looking at Keyshot 10.1, the brand new release from the folks at Luxion. And this one comes with uh, something that I really, really like. So sometime last week or, you know, two weeks ago, I did talk to you guys about the fact that we really need collision dictation system in our modeling toolset. And it's very interesting to see that Keyshot has actually implemented this owing to the fact that it is a rendering tool and i was actually thinking that this is something that would happen to modeling tool sets but it's very beautiful to see that this is now here so with this said we're going to take a look at some of the cool updates that's now available in keyshot 10.1 and also do a simple walkthrough of some of these things so just in case you want to get your feet wet with it you would know what you will be up against so with keyshot simply opened right here you would notice that it simply looks you know it looks the same there is no big difference it looks exactly like the same thing they've always used but then if you go over to the edit go over to add geometry and you add a simple cube and actually let's make that cube too so we would simply you know right click and make a duplication and click and drag this one out here now with this done the next which we're going to do is a uh, very very simple all you need to do to have collision happening directly here in Keyshot happens exactly with the move tool. So if I simply click right here, let's actually do this. So if I click and move by default, this is what you get with every other 3D app. There is no collision based system with any 3D app whatsoever. Once you move through an object, it simply moves through. But then once you simply go ahead and click on the move tool option, you would notice that we have a tiny bar right here. And right here under the section called advanced, because by default, it looks like this. So under the section called advanced, you would notice that we have collision. Now with this collision system, then what happens is if you move an object and try to move it across you notice that it snaps directly to the next object so automatically there's physics happening here and there's collision and believe me when i say it's physics because it is indeed physics so we're also going to go ahead and talk about some other cool things that's happening here but this is definitely going to be a lifesaver so imagine having so many tool sets or you know having so many models directly in your scene and you just simply want these things to align properly and not intersect with each other and you can see how easy this is going to come in now one of the things that you need to keep in mind is right here i can't really do anything that has to do with rotation because we already have collision right there and if i would like to simply move this that is also something that cannot happen because we already have collision happening so if you would like to move things like you know you want to move this object all the way up you need to make sure that you turn off collision and that way you can do all of these things and then you can also choose to bring them right here now you would also notice that we have something very very simple that is going on here and that has to do with we moving this object down now in most cases you don't really realize i mean even with this collision on in most cases you would like to simply place things and have them snap exactly to a point but then you don't want them to intersect you just want them to be at a position like this so what we can do is very very simple actually what i'm going to do is just you know right click and make a duplicate of this one as well and i'm just going to move this one all the way to this point so with this here one of the cool things that you can now easily do is you can simply snap these things to ground snap it to a local or a lower object and then you can snap it to pivot so right here if i would like this to snap to the floor and i don't want it to go through the floor i don't want it to stay above the floor i just need it exactly at the floor i can click on snap to ground and once i do that automatically this object is going to snap to ground so even if i move this all the way up and i choose to rotate this you know to a position like so and maybe rotate it towards an axis like this once i click on snap to ground automatically it snaps to ground this is going to save a lot of time and it's going to save a lot of people all of those tiny inconsistencies that happens when you're trying to layer models and also position models on top of one another you notice that this other one so if i actually you know turn this off and turn it back on move this all the way here so you would notice that because if i have this right here so if i have this here and i click on snap to lower object it snaps directly in this is actually not what you want but what you want is something that has that collision all right so what you can do is simple you can simply click on settle and this would simply settle directly on the lower object now for some reason the lower object doesn't seem to work once you click on it but if you click on the settle it simply settles directly on top of whatever object that is down there so you can position this like there we can turn this back and on you can move this all the way to this part and once you click on the word settle 
it simply throws an animation in there so let's uh, switch back to this so once you click on the word settle it simply throws an animation in there and it settles directly there and you could see that precision which is also very very refreshing so let's say for this example let's actually go ahead and you know delete this one i guess this is uh this is the cube so let's go ahead and delete this cube and also use this to take a look at something else so for this one i will simply move this all the way up and position this right about a point like this now for those who like to also see a very tiny set of animation that can happen with this this is also very possible as you can click on set this as a part and then if you click set this as part and if you click on settle you would notice that we have collision going on so real physics real collision is now available right here in keyshot and for those who like to play with it of course you can avail yourself of this wonderful opportunity and start working with it all right so with this said there is also some updates to the lighting now first it has that lighting feature we need to go over to zbrush and take a look at the beautiful model that one of our students actually did and uh, this is made possible by one of the students known as Ali Khan. So I'm going to send this over to ZBrush and how we can do that is simple. If you already have ZBrush installed and you have Keyshot, you need to go over to your render section, go over to external render and make sure that you have Keyshot turned on. Now with this turned on, I can simply hit on this button and this will export everything and take it over to Keyshot. Now right here in Keyshot, you would notice that we have our model and just to make sure that the model is exactly where it's supposed to be i'm just going to go ahead and you know select this click on the move object and then click on ground just to make sure that it snapped to the ground properly so i'm clicking on okay to get that there now if we go over to edit go over to the section where we have add light we can add the spotlight and we can also choose to drag this one all the way up and we can choose to also add a very simple point light now the reason why we're adding these lights is because i would like to share some light updates that is now available with keyshot 10.1 so for these lights what we are going to do is simple if you go over to windows and go all the way down to where you have your light manager you would notice that you have the light manager right here now in previous version of keyshot or the previous release of keyshot which is keyshot 10 we did see that the light manager was here and you know it had a couple of improvements but now it looks even way better the way you can control these things so let's say you would like to control your lights instead of going all the way to this part and you know go over to this part and do all of that stuff you can now easily do these things from here i can click and drag the brightness all the way down and i can also play with the contrast right over here if i would like to change the rotation of my hdr i can also do that right here and this is going to save us so much time and you know get things up and running for us so with this there if i would now want to play with the light so let's say you have multiple lights in your scene you want to control all of them at the same time you want to change the radius change the colors all at the same time now you can so i'm just going to set this one to wattage and if i select the both of them i can now change all of the colors at the same time if i would like to increase the power i can increase the power at the same time and if i would like to do some changes to these things they are all possible at once so i could also change the temperature and also you know do these beautiful things all at once without you know sacrificing time all the things can just simply happen now the same thing happens for the radius if you want to have a uniform radius across all of them you can grab all of them you know you can select hold down shift and select to do that or you can just simply select these things individually and get good with it so for this one i would simply just drag this all the way down so i guess for that one i would need to come through and select it click on this button to drag it down let's close this for a moment and i'm also going to reduce this about something like that let's rotate that so for this one i think it's best to reduce it about a point like so and you might be wondering like, why is this not casting on the floor now in most cases you might have also noticed that when you're working with spotlights you don't necessarily see them on the floor and that is because right here you don't have the ground illumination turned on so if i simply turn on the ground illumination you start noticing that and right now if we go over to the light section we can start doing all of those changes so for example let's say if i go through and select this right here and go over to the windows go over to where we have a light manager i can start making those uh, very interesting changes and you would notice them at once so right now i can set this all the way to 500 and right there you can start seeing that let's also turn this down a little bit so we can celebrate the light a little bit more of course you can see that let's also go ahead and play with this so i can also bring the radius of this one a little bit low and you know just to illuminate that stuff and we can also you know choose to increase this just about the point like that and right now with these new features you can easily control the lighting 
and also get some very nice things happening for you. Meanwhile, for those who are also excited about the updates that are now here, there are also a couple more updates that you may probably want to take a look want to take a look at. So for example, we've seen the collision and also the settle. There is also some keyframe advancement that has been made. And for those who like to work with GLTF, GLB, and also USDZ files, right now you can easily work with these things as there's an improvement and also an enhancement that has been added to the importation of these files directly in Keyshot. Meanwhile, if you would like to control the licensing, you want to be able to take charge of you know, the licenses that you have and also manage the trial licenses and streamline the license management across with the folks at Luxion. Right now, there's a Keyshot portal that can actually get you up to speed with something like that. For those who would like to read more about this, you want to see all of the features and also play with the updates, you can simply go over to the release notes, which I'm also going to put the link in the description. So let's see that. So you can go over the release note, take a look at these things and see how they're done. Take a look at the bug fixes that are now here. And at the same time, you can choose to do a simple trial, test out Keyshot, see if it works for you, and then you can proceed to make a purchase. Keyshot offers you, I guess, a 14 day trial, which you can use. And the beautiful thing is this is available for both Windows and Mac. So this is more like it. I'm very, very excited about the new cool feature that is now here that has to do with the collision dictation. And of course, I'd like to see more of these things happen in traditional 3D softwares and also 3D modeling apps as well. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And I'll like see you guys again with the tutorial update. Free Friday, Tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.